This is Retirement News Online. I'm Scott Drake. Well, contrary to popular belief, estate plans aren't just for the wealthy. The fact is that most people have something of value, and an estate plan can not only maximize the value of your assets, but help you make informed decisions on how those assets will be distributed. Uh, my guest is John Goodhue with APO Financial in Colorado. John, welcome back. Let's begin with uh, wills. It's important, you know, to have one, you know, as a basic necessity and to update it regularly, isn't it? Yes, Scotty, it is. Um, but a will is just the beginning of an estate plan. And I hear a lot of people say, well, I really don't have an estate. Well, guess what? If you've done even a decent job of saving, uh, even have a home, you have an estate. You may not think of it that way. Estate planning really covers two areas of your life. One, of course, is the one people think about is, okay, after I'm gone, what's going to happen to whatever I didn't spend or whatever I have left? Where's it going to go? Uh, that's right. That's, the number, that's kind of the number one uh, idea behind estate planning. But there are a number of things that can happen and need to happen in an estate plan during your lifetime. For example, you mentioned a will, Scott. A, a will is, is really only the beginning. Uh, th you need a general power of attorney. That generally is going to cover your financial concerns. If something were to happen to you, like disability, uh, during your lifetime, then you're going to need another power of attorney. It's a health care power, power of attorney. If you can't make health care decisions on your own, somebody needs to be making them for you. You really need to couple that with a living will. They actually need to be in the same document, not separate. That's something most people don't know. Those are the, your end of life decisions, uh, uh, your, your do not resuscitate orders, uh, when's, when's the right time to unplug you if there's no life signs from, from any kind of uh, respiratory equipment or anything that's keeping you alive. Then you have uh, a, a trust, and most people think of trusts as, as documents that uh, are, are take care of things after you're gone, which is true. We think of them as really a disability tool. Uh, because they're really the longer term disability tool. Tool, If something can't happen to you, your assets are actually titled in the trust and now your trustee can make the decisions and use your assets for your benefit, for their benefit, if your trustee is your spouse for example, and your children's benefit. And that's kind of the very basic part of estate planning. What I call below the line planning goes into things that most people do not look at. We try to look at this for our clients because I think this is the most important part of estate planning. That part is what happens to your assets if you die and maybe a future ex-spouse uh, takes part of your assets uh, from your children because that, that will happen. Uh, if they get divorced, uh, then what's going to happen there is you've left money to your kids, maybe your grandkids, and then your children take that and put it into a joint account. Uh, that joint account now is marital property and if they get divorced, half of your assets are going to them. You can protect against that you can protect against creditors. Let's say one of your children on the way to church, they're great money managers, but on the way to church they run over the new brain surgeon in town. Well, they're going to be in bankruptcy court because they're going to get sued for multiple millions of dollars. Your assets that you leave to them can be protected if you do it the right way from even bankruptcy creditors. Uh, and so now the assets that you left them can go to for their benefit and your grandchildren's benefit and even your great-grandchildren's benefit if the assets last that long. So one important part of estate planning is life insurance. Talk about that. Sure. Life insurance and estate plan is a really important tool uh, for a lot of reasons. There's different ways to utilize it. My favorite way from an estate planning perspective is to get money outside of people's estates uh, and also to provide income, tax-free income, because the death benefit of a life insurance policy is paid tax-free. So we like to come utilize those funds, put them into a separate trust. It's called an irrevocable life insurance trust. If you do that, any of those proceeds coming out of that policy are outside of your estate. And now there's tax-free money that your children or whoever your heirs are can use to come back in and pay taxes, especially on your tax-deferred accounts like your IRAs. 85% of all IRAs get inherited, or basically are passed on to our children and other heirs. Well, all that money's taxable. Well, now you're, if you can build a tax-free bucket of money for the children to, to use to come in and pay those taxes, look what you've done for your children or your other heirs. We think that's a remarkable use of a life insurance policy in estate planning. You know, for some people this can be a pretty complex process. Is an attorney necessary? Scott, not really. Um, it, it, if people just have a few assets, you can do a lot of things on your own. Uh, some of the tools online 
are, are very are very good. However, if you have even you know, I always say if people have somewhere in the four to five hundred thousand plus range of assets, yes, they need an attorney. You can't do all of this on your own, especially some of the more advanced trust aspects of it. Uh, but generally, if you just have a, a little bit of you know assets, you're going to use most of them up. Maybe the house is the only asset you're going to pass on. You can get by with doing things on your own if you do them properly. I would still suggest that you pass it by an attorney, even if you do it yourself, to get their blessing on it because people make mistakes in this area all the time. Great, John. Thanks again. Thank you. My guest has been John Goodhue with APO Financial in Colorado, and this is Retirement News Online. Thanks for watching.